very very big update very very huge update and <laughs> with an update this huge uh which is essentially kind of a soft perk shakeup. um how exactly are you going to make everybody happy here the answer is you can't so everybody hates this thing so much <laughs> and there's a, a lot of uh, validity uh to a lot of takes that i'm saying where people are very very unhappy but there's also some really dumb takes of why people are upset so yeah let's go ahead and get into this first off i do want to say there's gonna be some things that i just kind of like don't cover and it's not because i'm not trying to give you a full image like you can look up the um dev update yourself there's just some perks that got changes that are just so like minor or unimportant or just side grade the perk that like it's just not worth really talking about so if you're like oh, but, 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 uh, you didn't talk about about this perk uh, they got changed what about the teamwork perks dude they're, they're they just they're, they're like literally right up there i'm just not gonna be covering things that don't change them very significantly so yeah anyways let's keep talking about it um so first off this is uh speaking of hating this update this is where we get into my first big gripe the thing i'm not a fan of is they did confirm in fact that they are just nuking mori's for whatever reason the cypress mori's are now base kit uh and now every other mori is just being turned into a blood point bonus for receiving a mori which is probably the most like it wasn't broke but we're gonna fix it like change that i've ever seen in the history of this game just who was complaining about Mori's and the Mori offering is such a fun and great aspect of the game. Like we, if you don't follow me at twitch.tv slash the Mr. Headache, we do uh, Mori Mondays where like every, like, like we do Monday, full Monday streams uh, where we do as many Mori's as we can get. And it's like a big funny celebration thing. Now that's just dead. <laughs> because for some reason um okay let me read this out to you for some reason <clears throat> since this change would make memento mori offerings obsolete we reworked them to uh instead reward the killer with a large amount of blood points if you didn't want to make the moris obsolete why did you take away their primary function maybe just hear me out here if you didn't want memento mori offerings being obsolete maybe just leave them the way they fucking are who would have thought that that would have been a good idea? Now, one of the biggest criticisms that I've heard of this update is that it just kind of shows how much behavior does not play their own game and has no idea what we want or no idea what would be healthy for the game. And uh, this, you know, I, I, I read that sentiment and I was like, oh, wow, really? Uh, but yeah, <laughs> right off the bat, this is the first change in the list. Yeah. Uh, why are we nuking Mori's for no reason? Like, it's just like, I, I think the idea of a base kit Cypress is cool, but nuking green and iridescent mori's for no reason is just stupid <laughs> like there's no reason to do that whatsoever they they why just please please don't go through this please like holy moly i don't think anybody wants this the next perk i want to cover is the survivor perk it is corrective action corrective action is now being uh changed to where uh you cover other survivors mistakes but instead of uh what it used to do now it prevents a failed skill check turning it into a great skill check uh which is kind of abusable because if you don't know uh, one of the more cheesy combos that you can run in the game of dead by dale on survivor is stake out and hyper focus hyper focus Focus, meaning you get bonuses to progress on either healing or gens uh, by having stacks of consecutively hitting great skill checks. Uh, stake out is the way to cheese this because while hyper focus on paper is a very well designed perk and awesome, uh, there are ways to cheese getting great skill checks in this game, which was previously mostly relegated to just stake out. Now there's another option to do this, which I can see people teaming up and intentionally cheesing this and making hyper focus even more annoying. So that's cool i love how we keep <laughs> making gen perk progress perks good but continually nerfing gen regression perks which we will see later <laughs> another interesting thing is we're gonna live forever is returning in a sense because uh it's not only getting its healing change buff but now you don't have to activate it anymore if you guys remember old we're gonna live forever back in the day it was like the quintessential anti-slug perk uh and it lost a lot of its potency when it got updated but now it's gonna have that uh that just base endurance back over it does go on a 30 second cooldown so you can't have like a four man swift abusing it over and over uh but the, the funniest thing to come out of this change is not actually the change itself but uh what behavior said uh in the dev note which is <clears throat> survivors aren't left in the dying state very often so we want to make sure this perk is effective when the situation arises survivors aren't left in the dying state very often my my brother Slugging is like one of like the most prominent and and effective catch up tools for the killer. There's camping, tunneling, and then there's slugging. And it has always been that way. <laughs> I, I, 
do you play your own video game? What do you mean survivors aren't slugged very often? Raise your hand in the classroom if you get slugged fairly often playing Survivor. Yeah, it happens a lot. That's and it's because it's good. It's a good strategy. But like to to say you as the dev of the game, oh that don't happen very often. It's just like not true. Like dude, what what is happening? I don't understand. <laughs> Poised is cool. Poised uh, got a, a pretty sizable uh, buff. Now it's just aura reading on the killer for six seconds. Every time that you get on a gen, uh, that's kind of like a lot of the perks that I'm skipping over are giving aura on the killer in one way or another very briefly. It seems almost like killer needs its own kind of like distortion. <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. Don't throw rocks at me, okay? We'll get to the distortion part. Relax. But yeah, it's like the survivors are getting a lot, a lot, a lot of new ways to get uh, aura reading on the killer this patch. And this is probably the most interesting one i think quick gambit speaking of of, of, of gen <laughs> gen progression perks uh being buffed and made better but not slow down perks the slow down perks gotta go away quick gambit uh is now has been almost completely reworked it still has the base function of i get chased and gens go faster but you don't have to sandbag anymore at all matter of fact this perk no longer has a ranger commit period if i am getting chased before i get injured i just i just buff everybody on gens period because that's a good idea with people running hyper focus, stake out, prove thyself, toolboxes. Yeah, let's just let's just buff everybody's gen progress across the entire map for no reason. <laughs> it's okay. I I I I I truly don't understand. Like I, I literally don't. Like this is like I do try to like cam things up for 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 comedic purposes. What are you doing? I don't understand. You know, like just kind of like you know ham it up a little bit for humor. I generally don't get this. Like I just. Uh, th these changes feel like they're made by somebody that has like 20 hours in the game that just had like a lot of bad games in a row and we're like hmm how would i make the game better as an outsider <laughs> that's how it feels uh the, the the good caveat to this is it does go on a full minute cooldown after losing a health state so you're only applying it for the first chase but you you know have to realize that uh, more than killers in the modern day of dead by daylight still suffer a lot myers ghostface trapper Freddy, all it takes is a is a as a as a map with some you know not even like a high pallet density but a moderately high pallet density running pre dropping running pre dropping running pre dropping, and this would never go on cooldown. <laughs> like they, there would just be a base five percent buff to everybody in the map for uh, who knows how long, on top of all the other gen stuff that they're allowed to have. Who who is making up these decisions? Who is doing this? Who who is playing the game and also working on the game? Is there anybody doing that simultaneously? And I don't mean just like a game every once in a while. Like who is consistently playing the game of Dead by Daylight and recommending these changes? You have a whole consultant program. Are are you just not using them? Are you are you, are you not taking their suggestions? Because I I know consultants in the consultant program, and I know none of the ones that I know would ever personally recommend any of this. <laughs> so like, are you just not listening to them? Like, I don't. Ah. <laughs> and here comes distortion, which is the big change that everybody has been wanting for a while. Um, now distortion, like by a lot of people's suggestion, only regains uh, a, a singular token, by the way. It is not a multi-token perk anymore. It's just a one use. It goes off and then you have to get into a chase to get another use, um, which, you know, makes the perk a lot weaker. But honestly, having one perk counter a, a, a majority of killer perks that aren't slow down was kind of silly and it's funny because i thought that we were pretty universal on the fact that distortion did so much for so little and that was kind of silly and it also encouraged like kind of like tunnely gameplay from the killer because obviously if i can't find the person hiding i'm gonna go after the same people over and over um the dbd twitter post for this where they announced this dev update is full of people talking about how behavior is ruining the survivor role it's like a self-report, right? That's a hundred percent a self-report. <laughs> like this many people were crutching this perk, which was uh, not play the game as much as possible. This perk is quite literally besides telling what info perks the killer has. I'm not going to play the game, the perk. This many people were hopping on the game to play the game and then not playing the game. I'm not going to interact with the killer. I'm going to play as stealthy as possible. I'm going to play a big game of hide and seek and not dead by daylight. That's how many people were doing that. I'm real. I'm real, man. Genetic limits is cool. Now it uh, activates every time somebody loses a health state. So it's like pretty good on like spirit and twins and stuff like that now. That's neat. That's cool. I'll take that. Leverage is crazy. Leverage is 
now uh, whenever somebody unhooks, their healing speed is reduced for 50% for 30 seconds. So they get halved. This is going to be like the back to hook perk. Like if you're trying to run anti heal in 2024, which is really hard because they nerfed almost every aspect of anti heal into the dirt uh, fairly recently. Uh, hey, this is going to be the perk for you if you miss that playstyle because as long as you come back to hook to interrupt that heal, odds are you going to be able to keep people injured because. Are they going to sit through the, 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 the literally half the healing speed? Probably not. You're probably, uh, especially if you're a high mobility killer like Wraith, Xeno, something like that, you're going to be able to come back to hook. So that's interesting. Machine learning also got a, a pretty sizable buff. Um, well, people were already complaining that uh, people were sleeping, quote unquote, sleeping on machine learning and that it was already good. But now uh, it just the most recent generator is the one that is compromised. If you remember, you used to have to like kick one gen and then kick another it was it was too complicated the trigger state was so frustrating <laughs> but now it's just the last gen you kick so that's interesting zanshin is kind of wild zanshin got a, a pretty like complete overhaul and rework uh, now whenever survivors within six meters of a drop pallet uh within 16 meters of your location their aura is revealed for 10 seconds this could be potentially very very strong on killers like pyramid head artists stuff like that um that just get to hit you through the walls right <laughs> like that that is really good because it does only ever a a um a duration of 10 seconds but i don't see anything here about like a cooldown or anything so like as long as they like say we we you know we're chasing a shack and i drop shack pallet and they don't immediately kick it which you should in most cases but um if you're one of the characters like like nurse pyramid head artists who can hit through the wall you can just play that like you could totally just play that and even if you somehow do not get them within the first use uh it doesn't say it has a cooldown so it's just gonna keep going um there's also uh this also uh, proportionally makes things way stronger at a lot of other tiles um like four lanes where you drop the pallet and, and you know anytime you get near that it's good it's good this is a very very good perk it was a very, very good perk all of a sudden, which is kind of wild, considering it used to be probably one of the worst killer perks in the game. <laughs> um, so that's interesting. I, I do think this would... I would probably give this some sort of cooldown, because uh, just having infinite word reading if you're near the palette at all is kind of wild. Damn it, Switch got nerfed for some reason. This is what I was kind of harping on earlier. It's for some reason, Baver's like, yeah, gen perks go up, gen regression perks go down. <laughs> it's like, no, they should be nerfed at the same time if you're going to get rid of one side of the coin you have to adjust the other or i guess you don't because you don't play your own game and you don't know what it's like to 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 struggle in games because you just you just don't play your game so you don't you don't understand what that's like so yeah dead man's now only applies on the first survivors who stop repairing a generator and that's it which is very cool uh they increased the duration because they thought that would help uh but yeah that's why are we doing this? I don't... Eh. I don't mind gen regression getting nerfed. I know that's kind of a hot take. But like I said, you're going to have to simultaneously address perks on the other side that are... Or items on the other side that are really strong that apply the opposing effect. But they're just not doing that. So you're just kind of like running out of stuff to run on killer. But <laughs> the things on the other side that apply the same effects are not being addressed in any way. So it's just kind of like, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know what they're doing. This is the most confusing dev update that I've seen, I will say. Like, it's just, it just, it's, like, I agree with the people that were pointing it out in so, DVD social media. It just seems really like tone deaf. Like they just don't play their own game. Blood Echo no longer has a cooldown, so that's pretty cool. I don't think I'll see it used that much more often outside of people like Plague and Legion, but it is a little bit better, so that's neat. Predator got completely reworked, which has a, a brand new effect. If infamously, uh, Wraith has the, kind of the worst teachables in the game. Um, but this one is getting a pretty sizable rework uh, that when a survivor escapes a chase, you reveal their aura for six seconds. So there's a lot of situations where this would actually be helpful. Um, you know, stealth has been pretty strong in DBD for a while, even outside of distortion, and it's become a very popular play style. Uh, I know a lot of survivors uh, will walk their corners and try to walk at certain points in chase to break bloodlust. But now when you do that, Predator will just reveal you. Also, with scratch marks and uh, the audio being bugged right now, uh, having this perk would actually be pretty nice because if you lose somebody for no other reason than scratch marks bad or that uh, you know, the audio said they were going to the left, but actually they walked to the right <laughs> or they went behind a wall and their audio is now muted uh, for no reason. Um, this this perk will just reveal them. So pretty good tracking perk, actually. All right. So this change 
This change is the one that a lot of people have been waiting for for a while is the Skull Merchant update, which actually, um, don't throw tomatoes at me. I kind of don't like this. Um, this has a lot of layers to it. Um, the, <laughs> they decided to just kind of like nerf the character overall to a point where she might be like a bottom five, bottom three character in the game, which like, you know, as somebody who, you know, plays Survivor so often, like once twice a week um i do enjoy that when i'm running i'm going to be running the skull merchant that she's not going to be as nearly as impressive she's losing her haste uh the hindered is decreased uh the drone skin lines has been reduced to one um it's there's just a lot of stuff that like was frustrating about it it's gone but they didn't give her anything back so they just kind of like nerfed her and didn't compensate her they did say in a response on their twitter that they are still planning to do that rework that they promised in the reddit asked me anything um and also follow through with the with more in-depth uh changes uh but they didn't compensate her with anything right now so she just might fall to be the third or like the bottom three or bottom five worst characters in the game which is kind of concerning because they kind of did something similar with Trickster where they quote unquote reworked Trickster, but they just kind of like nerfed him. <laughs> and they said, yeah, we'll fix it later. And obviously that's never happened. <laughs> they've never they've never adjusted him after that, uh, which was a very similar situation of a character that, you know, in terms of counterplay, left a lot to be desired. And we just wanted to have more options against the character. And instead, they just kind of like made a worse version of the character and said, we'll fix it later. And then didn't. Uh, and I think this is another one of these situations where they're like, okay, well, let's just like soft delete the character and then fix it later. And there's probably a lot of you both out there in the DVD social media space, and maybe even down in the comments below going like, well, well, just go merchant deserves it. Keep in mind, this is a philosophy that if you okay and you allow it, which is just nerf the character to the point where they're nearly unusable and then fix it later, but we may not get to it. It may just never happen. That may happen to your character. It may happen to your clown, your Deathslinger, your Xenomorph. They may do it to your character that you play. And it won't feel so good when that happens to you. So let's keep that energy, okay? The Hillbilly update was not really surprising. I think that while, you know, somebody who used to main overheat Billy, <laughs> that uh, I'm glad he's in, in a really, really good spot. Top three, top five character in the game. Uh, Overdrive is really, really strong. And just some minor uh, adjustments to make that like a little bit uh, more in line with what they want. That's fine with me. As long as we don't go back to overheat Billy, I'm good. Twins had some minor nerfs uh, to make the, the kicking of Victor a little bit more responsive and more effective uh, by making the uh, cooldown after Victor down somebody longer and also the crush effect a little bit longer or the cr the crush cooldown, right? Like when he when he does get kicked. But yeah, overall, the character is basically the same. And now we have another one of these things where uh, <laughs> we're back here again, where I'm like, what does behavior play their own game? I'm not sure. I don't think they do. So a lot of the unknown changes you could probably call like blurry photo coming partially based kit, uh, some uh, HUD and visual and audio feedback changes to make it things a little bit more clear. Yeah, you would be right if you called that. But for some reason, they've decided that the edge tech that unknowns do in order to tap their button to delay the placement of a hallucination so they can purposely place those almost like demo portals in places that are more helpful to them, whether it be chase, whether that be uh, to pressure gens or areas. They're taking that out. You want to hear the reasoning for this, too, because it's not even because of the tech. Listen to this. Tapping the power button can postpone a hallucination from spawning, but to a survivor, it appears as if they're about to launch the UVX. They're not even taking it out because of the tech. They're taking it out because they think it unfairly zones the survivor, which I don't know if you, I don't know, actually play the character. You do that almost uniquely to place hallucinations in specific areas on purpose for later use. You're not placing hallucinations to zone survivors. I heard, and this is, you know, I don't, I don't remember what the source was, so grain of salt. I heard once that behavior picked a lot of their consultants carefully because they want to have people who are good at certain characters so they can get notable feedback that is uh, as accurate as possible to the changes that they would plan to make. If that is true, they don't have an unknown person because this is not why people do the edge tech. That is not why people do that. 
And if, I don't know, it would take like, like it's just, it would take like two seconds. Okay, two seconds is a nine chapter. It would take like two minutes of research on this to be like, oh no, they that's why they use this. Like I just, that, that's not what they use it for. Like I don't know how else to phrase this. Like that's just not, people don't use it to zone in. People don't use the edge tech to zone and chase. They use it to, to place their hallucinations in areas that they're helpful so they can come back to them later. That's not, that's not what they use it for. So nerfing it based on something that it doesn't, that doesn't actually happen. I don't, I just, that is the end of it. That is like all of them. Of course, I skipped some of the stuff that's like, you know, minor changes or changes that were more of like side grades instead of like, big buffs or big nerfs um but like if i could summarize this i don't think i think the word i don't i don't know what how can i describe this if i could summarize this very succinctly in a very short-handed way it it shows more than anything that like they have a consultant program they're not listening to them it does not appear so if they have all these fog whispers that they have that do a lot of work to try and like learn and understand the game. They're not listening to them. I, th if these these changes cannot be made by people who play this game, <laughs> like not saying they're all bad. There's some like cool stuff in there, um, but some of the big changes, like the Mori change, the Skull Merchant change, the Unknown change, the... It just... It doesn't seem like these changes are made by people who play the game. Because people that actually play the game would be like, uh, no? That's not why that happens. Like, the we're gonna forever... We're, the we're gonna live forever statement of, well, people don't get slugged very often, so this is fine. <laughs> it's just like... Brother, do you play DVD? Do you play the video game you develop for? Because, like, yeah, people do get slugged fairly often. It's what, it, like, killers catch up one of four ways: tunneling, camping, basement, or slugging. That is like, the, like, one of the main things that killers do to catch up and save on pressure. You don't play your game, or if you do, well, are you playing it like, like, baby's first ASIM a a a MMR? Like, it has to be, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like literally breaking my brain trying to like figure out like, okay, well, how can this make sense? Because <laughs> it just doesn't. <laughs> um, yeah, mostly, you know, they, a lot of their dev updates, a lot of their changes recently have been pretty cool, pretty great. Um, and with as many changes as there are, there's going to be things that you like and things that you hate. But I would say that uh, a majority, so over half of these changes, I want actively to not come to the game, which is kind of sad. So, yeah, um. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys think of the developer update? There was a lot to come through, a lot to talk about. So, yeah, I'm very excited to see what you feel. Um, and a friendly reminder, because I saw how a lot of people were treating this in the um, the actual social media posts for this dev update. Um, you're allowed to disagree about characters, perks, and stuff like that, and new mechanics, but you should be cordial when talking about it. Don't call people don't call people idiots. Don't call people stupid. Don't be insulting. Keep the topic on the topic. Keep the discussion on the topic. Don't don't make it personal, okay? Yeah. Um. I'll, I'll try to keep playing more lights out so I can get you a video on that out probably tomorrow or whatever it happens to be. Um. But yeah, I give an update. But I do upload daily, so I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>